Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in a series about the OpenRC init system. These videos are going to serve as an introduction to OpenRC, the important concepts about it, how to use it to manage init and the daemons on your system, and how to configure it to work according to your preference. These videos are intended to serve as an introduction to the OpenRC concepts that they'll address, so they're not going to go completely in detail about every little aspect of the system, but hopefully after watching this series you will be able to use OpenRC effectively to manage the daemons on your Gentoo system or Arctic system or whatever other Linux distribution you have that is using OpenRC. Now the first thing that I want to do is to briefly go over what OpenRC is. Now OpenRC is an init system. It is a process spawner and to a certain extent process manager that runs in a Linux system. Now here on the Gentoo Wiki page about OpenRC, you can see that they refer to it as a dependency-based init system that maintains compatibility with the system provided init program. That means that OpenRC is not the actual init program that is running that will spawn the first processes on your system. Rather, the core of OpenRC is the dependency management system. Now it's not critically important to understand all of this in detail. Those of you coming from, say, a systemd environment can think of OpenRC as just a replacement for systemd. OpenRC is an init system just like systemd and it can do the things that systemd does or any of the other extant large init systems can do. We're not really going to get into a comparison of OpenRC and other init systems here. Gentoo Wiki has a page that goes into detail on that and I will link that in the description of my video. But suffice it to say that those of you who are used to using systemd to do things like start and stop daemons will be using OpenRC and its built-in utilities and its methodology of doing things instead on a Gentoo system. Now the first thing that we should be able to do with OpenRC is to get some information about the processes that it has started. The simplest command to do this with is the RC status command. Now RC status is going to display some information about processes that OpenRC has started according to the run level that they were started in. Now run levels is a topic that I will address uh, in more detail in the second video in this series. But the main thing that you need to understand about run levels right now is that in order for OpenRC to ever start a process, it has to be assigned to a certain run level. Now if we run RC status without any options, it's going to show us the processes that are in the default run level and in these dynamic run levels. If we want to see more processes besides just the ones in these run levels, we can run RC status dash A to see everything. And this will print out a large list. It would be easier to pipe this to lists. And we can scroll down and take a look at all of these different processes that OpenRC has started in different run levels. If you want to see only the status of processes in certain run levels, you can pass a run level as an argument to RC status and it will show only the processes that were started in that run level. So let's pass it the run level boot and see what processes are started at boot. There are several options that you can pass to RC status, and we can check out the man page for RC status to see some of those. For instance, if you pass the dash C option to RC status, it will only display crash services. Or if you pass the dash M option to RC status, it will only show those services that you've started manually. One important one on this list is the dash S option, which will show all services without the added information of what run level they're running in. So let's go ahead back out here and let's run RC status dash s and you can see it just prints a huge list of services now this is useful if we want to see the status of a particular service we can do something like run rc status dash s and grep for a service name like say e login d and you can see that we can just get the information that rc status knows about that particular daemon without seeing all that extra information that we don't necessarily want okay good now we know how to find information about individual daemons so let's move on to starting and stopping those daemons we'll cover stopping first now i'm going to run this rc status command again but i'm going to search for ntpd instead as you can see, that brings up two entries. It brings up BusyBox NTPD, but the one that I'm looking for is the regular NTPD entry that you can see says it is started. Now we can see this in just the regular RC status output as well, because NTPD is in the default run level. It's right here, and it's started. Now what if I wanted to stop that NTPD process for some reason? Well, the way to do that on an open RC system is actually to give orders to the process in the Etsy init.d directory. Now what I mean by that is, there is a directory, etc init.d, that contains a large number of executable scripts 
for each process that exists on your system. As you can see in the output of this ls command, ntpd is there as well. And the way that you manage daemons directly in OpenRC is to pass commands to the scripts that are located in this etc init.d directory. So let me go ahead and clear this off. If I want to stop ntpd, what I should do is I should say, with sudo permissions, etc init.d ntpd stop my password and as you can see it'll say here that it's caching service dependencies and it's stopping NTPD so if we were to run RC status again you can see that NTPD here is stopped so we successfully stopped the service now if we want to start it again as you've probably guessed the way to do that is to pass the start command to etc init.d NTPD and as you can see the output says that it's starting NTPD and if we were once again to run RC status, the NTPD has been started again. This is the way that you will manage all of the individual services on your system with OpenRC. This is how you will start and stop them. And individual services have a few other commands that you might be able to pass to them besides just start and stop. But the most common things that you'll have to do as a user of OpenRC is to start and stop processes. Restarting processes is something else that's super easy in OpenRC. As you've probably guessed, you just pass the restart command to any given daemon. And as you can see, all that will do is it will stop and then start that daemon. Now, one thing that I will mention here is sometimes if a process were to crash, that is, have some sort of error that causes it to fail, you may not be able to simply restart the daemon to get it to run again. If you were to run the RC status command and see somewhere that one of these processes that pops up says that it has crashed, before you are able to start it again, you may actually have to pass the zap command to it. So for instance, if NTPD had crashed, then before we could start it up again, we might have to pass the zap command to it. Now what zap will do is reset the service state, which will allow us to start the process over again. Zap is something that you should only have to do to crash processes, but it's something important to keep in mind, and is one of the common commands that you'll probably end up having to pass the daemons if you run into crashes with them. Okay, and that should conclude the first video on OpenRC. The main goal for this video was just to get you up to speed on finding information, the most basic information about your running daemons, and on starting, stopping, and restarting them, and the OpenRC approach to doing that. In the next video, I'm mainly going to cover run levels and the important things about them, but I'll also cover some more ways to get information about the daemons that are running on your system. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next OpenRC video. Until then, goodbye.